Awara Studio by Dr. Katina Michael from Wollongong University. Welcome to State Focus. Hi Guy, how are you? Very well, thank you. Why do we need to microchip humans? Well, there are a variety of reasons why people are looking into microchipping humans. If we had a little chip actually put into ourselves, what, what kind of a radiation risk is that? Uh, at the moment, the Food and Drug Administration has actually passed microchip implants in the United States to be within the body and beneath the skin. And uh, they are not really concerned about the health risks posed by implants. Microchipping is, uh, I think, originally in America, as you alluded to earlier. But, but what aspect of that research is being conducted in Wollongong? Okay, well, with regards to microchip implants, it is a global phenomenon and we do have uh, implantees now coming up all over the world, uh, mostly in North and South America, but also in Europe now we have people that are hobbyists that want to implant themselves. And at Wollongong University in the School of Information Systems and Technology, we are really looking at the social implications of that technology. Maybe in the future, uh, but at the moment I'm hoping that we are really, you know, ironing out all those particular risks and benefits uh, to society at large and looking at potential niche applications but really we are concerned more about the implications of the technology and those uh, consequences that we're not really waiting for to happen once the technology is really widely rolled out all over the world. All right, fascinating stuff. We'll see where that develops. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Thanks, Guy. Thank you. Back there. They're we're gearing up. We've got a few people joining. So, so <laughs> you and I have been talking about the story yes. that you're doing tonight, this microchip deal. Yes. So what, what is the deal with it? Okay. It sounds, I mean, it kind of sounds like Mark of the Beast, right? I mean, because that's sort yeah. of what comes to your mind at first. And right. then after diving into this story for the past month or so, I'm learning so much about the people who are doing this. There are basically two different subsets of people here in Dallas-Fort Worth who are really delving into this. You've got the bioengineers, and they're the ones doing the research, all the medical stuff. These are all these are all the people who, who got great grades in those exactly. classes we didn't get. Right. The people who, we, we, we wish we knew that. Exactly. Still, right? right, right, right. Um, there's another group yeah. called the grinders, and they are people who, you know, gauges in their ears. They tend to live on the edge, right. and um, they call themselves this. But there is a, a, a... By the way, Will Clark hasn't even heard all your explanation. He says no thanks already. <laughs> okay, all right. No thanks. Well, what's really fascinating about this is people are doing this. They're, they're getting a little, uh, basically, skin deep implant. It's about the size of a grain of rice. Right. Some of them are doing this so that they don't have to carry a security access badge at work. They just simply wave so you, their hand. I mean, it's almost like Mission, uh, I'm thinking like a, a Tom Cruise movie, whatever. Yeah, Minority Report. Reporter, right. whatever, you know, Something just scanning like yourself. Right, I know. It, it, but it's sort of like um, the future is here. So do you have to go to a dock for this? No. And that is the, that's the biggest shocker in this story. You do not, you are going to be so surprised by where this is happening. Cassie says Jesus is coming. <laughs> <laughs> I hear he is. Oh man. All right, well, all right, so story tonight. The Capitol, the controversy over vaccinations heating up again, this time over a bill that would require schools to inform the state which children have opted out of the vaccines. Some of those who are opposed to vaccinations are fearful of the state getting a hold of the names of those who have opted out. For fear, it's a step towards tracking them down. I use it every day, literally every single day. It's very useful to me. She's talking about microchipping. It is a popular way to keep track of pets, but would you microchip yourself? A swipe of your hand to unlock doors, turn on lights, even log into your cell phone or your computer. It's called biohacking and some people swear by it. We live in a digital world filled with computers, cell phones, even fitness trackers. People use technology for everyday conveniences, but some might be taking it to the extreme by doing something called biohacking. Show me your hand. Okay, um, you kind of barely see it. Chrissy Heishman is among dozens of North Texans implanted with a tiny low frequency microchip. Like the size of a grain of rice. So it feels like a BB. Yeah. You've seen it before in movies. It's maybe a little uncomfortable. <clears throat> but science fiction is now reality. Now to something exciting. The Mobile World Congress 2016 started with a ban on Monday as Samsung and Facebook announced a major partnership involving virtual reality. Virtual reality steals the limelight from all of the smart devices at this year's Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Power players at this show, Samsung and Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. It's an honor to be part of this great company as we take the next big step forward to a galaxy of new experiences.
Okay, no. let's try Put this on six. We just came here from Montana. There's nothing, nothing like this. That, you know, maybe you would once in a while. I see the north. I've seen the northern lights maybe a half a dozen times in yeah, 25 years. Yeah, but nothing years. like this where it goes. It's a huge leap of faith that you're going to yeah. come and you're going to see what you traveled so far for. So. Oh my gosh, look at the shape of that thing. Now suspected in the largest mass bald eagle kill ever recorded in the state of Maryland. Well, birds are also at the center of a rare case on Maryland's eastern shore. In fact, Natural Resources Police say that they've never seen anything like it. Thirteen bald eagles dead in a farm field in Caroline County. The symbol of America is at the heart of a mystery. Saturday, a man walking an eastern shore farm field in Caroline County near Federalsburg found four dead bald eagles. He called Natural Resources Police to the scene. Officers he found another nine for a total of 13. Walking in the woods looking at our deer stands. Just a normal day for Glenn breeding Saturday here in Federalsburg on the eastern shore. But that was all about to change when he found a dead bald eagle. And when I saw the first one, I didn't know what to think. And that's unusual. As a matter of fact, that's historic. What killed them is unknown. They were fairly recently dead. They, there was no sign of trauma. There's no sign of gunshot. Breeding spends a lot of time outdoors and has strong feelings about our nation's majestic bird. You think of America. I mean, I've, I've got some statues of eagles and, you know, around, and it's, it's our bird. It's our country. Yeah. And uh, something or somebody has taken that another piece of it away. Well, an unusual thing to see on Interstate 680, dead crows on the shoulder. Now, this is right near the Midlothian Boulevard exit going northbound. First News did call ODOT for information, and a spokesperson says crews will remove the dead birds from the road tomorrow. It's not sure how the birds ended up on the road. Sea lions keep turning up on San Diego beaches. This was the second sea lion pup found stranded right by the OB pier in a matter of about 12 hours. But this time, the little guy made it through this opening in the seawall, and locals say he was headed for Newport Avenue. We have some video for you to show you him making his way toward the streets. Very adorable, but very dangerous. Locals here crowded around the little pup, trying to keep him safe. They called police. A devastating sight in Chile. Dozens of dead sea lions have washed up on the country's northern shore in the region of Antofagasta. This is the grim scene on the beach in Honitos, seals found in an advanced state of decomposition. Experts don't know how long this phenomenon will last, and according to local media, Bodies started washing up on the shore two months ago. Disturbing images of dead fish, even that dolphin, showing up in Sanibel and Cape Coral. Tonight, NBC2's Lindsay Fry talked with experts to find out if this could be another effect of the Lake Okeechobee water releases. It's sad. You know, a lot of the... Uh wildlife around here seems to be taking a hit. Fisherman Whitney Jones has lived on Sanibel for more than a decade. He says it was Tuesday when he noticed this dolphin floating upside down in the water. Noah took samples of the dolphin's tissue to find out what caused it to die. We need to solve this because we're, animals are dying. On
Tonight, a partial ceasefire is supposed to take effect in Syria. If it does, it would be the first in the five-year-old civil war there, but no one's holding out hope. We do know the guns will be quiet in one town south of Damascus because there is no one left to kill. Today, there are a few soldiers left guarding the ruins as the battle has moved on. The drive into Sheikh Muskeen is non-stop wreckage. And when you stop, there's silence. There's just been an airstrike behind me. We're about five miles from the center of Damascus. Canisters filled with explosives rolled out of a chopper. They're cheap, but horribly inaccurate. Look at that massive waves causing water to run up and onto the North Shore roadways. This is by three tables of Pupakea on the North Shore, just one of the many places overcome by the waves that rolled in one after the other up onto the roadways, pounding miles of shorelines statewide. Good evening, everybody. It's all because the state took some unprecedented action by closing the highway today that kept people safe, all the way shut from Haleiwa to Turtle Bay. What once were sandy beaches are now just roots left exposed after being pounded by wave after wave. Driving on the road, it was uh, pretty uh, exciting to see the waves and um, I haven't seen it like this in, in a while. Evening. It's been a wild day on the water with huge waves lashing beaches right along the southeast coastline. Despite repeated warnings and pleas, lifeguards were flat out performing rescues as the swimmers and surfers risked the cyclonic like swell. Moffat Beach was closed too, though it didn't look it. It was like some kind of oversized washing machine. Mate, what's it like out there? Scary. The waves here at Moffat Beach are stupidly big. And there's a strange phenomenon going on. There is so much backwash here from when the water smashes into the rocks and then it rushes back. The water is sort of colliding with the waves as they come in. It was a spectacle that drew plenty of spectators. I'm amazed. It's, um, it's really big. We've lived here for 10 years. I think it's one of the biggest I've seen. Even some of the offshore boys clocked some of those waves at six metres. That's from peak to trough, so just huge. Yeah, I decided not to. Probably smart. Never seen it this bad here in all the years we've been here. But no, this is unbelievable. Still, to the frustration of lifesavers, people ignored the warnings. In the meantime, a lot of people are talking about this story today. An SUV in Memphis completely consumed by flames. In fact, the only item in that vehicle not singed by the fire, a copy of the Bible. Take a look. A Bible that was in the front seat of an SUV during a fiery crash was not damaged. Wow. This happened Sunday in Memphis, Tennessee. A driver sideswiped a man in a Jeep, causing him to lose control and crash. His Jeep burst into flames. Well, good Samaritans, even a canine officer, rushed to the rescue. Amazingly, a Bible that was in the front seat was the only item that police were able to recover from the fire. Oh, it looks completely untouched. Yeah. That is incredible. And the driver was able to escape unharmed, too. Wow. So all the way around, incredible. Just down the road, the 145-year-old historic St. John's Church was reduced to just a pile of rubble. It's a lot of damage out there, and uh, it's, it's something that a lot of my staff have, have never seen before. As strangers and neighbors began to help the victims clean up, among the devastation, perhaps a miracle. Bibles at that destroyed historic church were saved, and so were the lives of this community. Somebody was watching, that's for sure. It was the scariest thing I've ever had to go through in my life. Josh Keith was in his RV Tuesday when the storms ripped through. This afternoon, he's back with his brother to collect what's left. He leaves empty-handed except for his mother's ashes and a Bible.